So in the 1960s, with all the weird uh, lack of scouting for the initial entry draft, what did it mean for somebody to be drafted first overall? Well, there were some quality players that were taken with first-round picks, but in the case of this gentleman, uh, he ended up being one of the greatest players in Rochester Americans history, uh, one of the greatest players ever come out the NOJHA, and in my opinion, one of the best players from the 1960s and 70s not to play in the NHL or WHA despite expansion. So today we're going to be talking about the number one overall pick from the 67 NHL entry draft, uh, a guy who first came into major problems with the Sudbury Wolves and put up uh, dynamite numbers with the Garson Falconbridge Native Sons. Of course, we have to be talking about uh, Rick Pognuti. Now, Rick Pognuti, born Sudbury, Ontario, November 14, 1946, big drink of water, 6'1", 185, was taken first overall by the Kings in 1967 because of a dynamite season where he put up 93 points as a defenseman. He had 30 goals and 80 points in 39 games for Garson in his second season. The previous year had 27 points in 21 games and added, added 13 points in seven playoff games. Now, the Kings decided to send him to Springfield to uh, give him some seasoning, and he put up some okay numbers, 17 points in 54 games. 1969, he uh, put up 18 points with Springfield in 65 games. Now, 1970, he found himself in the Boston system and uh, played with Salt Lake of the WHL and the Oklahoma City Blazers of the CHL, 63 games, 4 goals, 9 assists for 13 points. Now, in the next two years, he played with the Fort Wayne Comets of the IHL, best season of course was that dynamite 1972 uh, campaign where he had 54, 58 points in 64 games. Now, what really hurt him at the start of his career, uh, he missed part of the 68 season with mononucleosis. He was eventually claimed by Salt Lake of the WHL from LA in June 69, reverse draft. Now, Pegs, as he was called, won the IHL Governor's Trophy as the league's best defenseman and was named to the IHL All-Star First Team with Fort Wayne in 1972. Now here comes the interesting part of his career. He was selected by the Alberta Oilers, later the Edmonton Oilers, in the 1972 NHL General Player Draft, which was the first draft in WHA history, in February 72. Now, at the time, by my memory, he was 25, but because he had not played in the NHL, he was, for under some reasons with the league, still uh, draft eligible. Now, his years in the AHL were tremendous with Rochester. He was named a second-team All-Star with the squad in 1973 and 75. He also played on the Rochester team that won the AHL regular season title in 74. And of all people, he played on defense with Mike Melbury in the 74-75 season. Now, he left Rochester in 1976 as the team's all-time leading scorer among defensemen. Uh, 195 points, uh, of course, a record has since been broken. Now, he was inducted into Rochester Americans Hall of Fame in 2012. Uh, he finished his career in the NHL with the Bingham Dusters uh, with 52 points in 68 games. But I just want to go over those four seasons that he put in with Rochester. Again, Hall of Fame uh, numbers, 55 points in 73. 54 points in 74, 52 points in 75, and 33 points in 76. 18, 11, 12, and 4 goals. And in the playoffs, ladies and gentlemen, some, some great numbers. He put uh, 6, 6, 12, and 7 playoff games, 6 goals, uh, uh, 6 goals, and 11 assists again for uh, 17 points. Now with Bingington again 52 points in 68 games in 77, 2 goals and 4 assists for 6 points in 10 playoff games. Now again that Governor's Trophy in 1972 uh, as the top defenseman in the IHL comparable to Norris. Now he's the all, not the only uh, talented player in the family. His son Matt uh, played uh, college hockey in the NCAA and professionally in the East Coast uh, Hockey League. So uh, a first overall pick and uh, preceded by Barry Gibbs, uh, succeeded by Michelle Plass, and again, LA's first ever 
because it was expansion year draft pick. I think he could have made the NHL, so it's still a head scratcher. You look at these numbers, uh, and you know, Mike Milbury made it, and uh, Rochester, for that four year stretch he was there, was developing a lot of players for the NHL. So I don't know really what happened. If anybody knows, very talented guy, a dynamite uh, player movement. You make any Hall of Fame, especially in Rochester, if you can make it in Rochester for hockey, you can make it anywhere because you know the, the famous Rochester logo. But just take a look at his player, ladies and gentlemen. He looks like a hard nosed guy. I heard he was a nice guy, but I wouldn't want to cross this guy, you know, on a blue line because I you probably get whacked. And you, you know, despite uh, the years he played, he was never a dirty player, really. I think his most points totals was his last year with uh, Garson. Now, you're probably wondering what Falcon Bridge is. Falcon Bridge is a mining company, which was around and merged with uh, Extrada uh, and uh, Naranda over the years. But uh, Falcon Bridge is also a name of a community in Quebec and is a big uh, community name in my family. Uh, again, uh, you know, um, uh, it's, it's amazing the amount of Naranda and Falcon Bridge uh, money that went towards hockey at that time. And don't forget, these years with the Sudbury Wolves were tremendous as well. 48 points in 73 games these first two two seasons with them. Now, if you anybody out there knows him and uh, knows a little bit of trivia about what happened, why he didn't make the NHL, I really don't know. I could, you know, Colorado, Kansas City, some, Washington, somebody could use them. And you know, a lot of those AHL players had made it to the NHL. So I really don't know. The points were there. The talent was there. It might be the fact he was so happy in Rochester. And he loved them down there, ladies and gentlemen. I know that for a fact. I saw some, um, some PR uh, from Rochester in the 1970s talking about, you know, a number one draft picks, but number one in their hearts. Anyway. So ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, if you like what we're doing here, give us a like, comment, and subscribe. It's Hockey Night Canada across Canada today. I'm not watching the game. I'm, I'm always nervous where Montreal can end the series. When I started my podcasting tonight, we're up 2-0. Keep your fingers crossed because if Montreal makes it to semifinals, uh, it's good for the Canadian economy. And it's, if Canada is opening out because of COVID, what a way to go. Let, let the glorious ones lead the way towards the new world order. Have a good day. Bye.